Okay, so uh, when we left last left la last left our heroes, uh, so you uh, just saw Elric basically sprint. You're face down on the ground, having been blasted off your ass by all the racks that worshipped, and you see Elric just sprinting past you, past the the temple to Orcus, and into the darkness. In the in, a few moments later, you hear the echoing screams of of Elric kind of reverberating throughout the cavern, and then nothing but silence. What do you do? Well, um, I'm pretty much like on the ground with no HP, and Parry was coming to help me up, so I kind of need Parry to stabilize me. Okay, uh, so uh, the. Everybody else um, is is out of out of your sight range, and where we left off, Bob was doing his. Everybody, line up and get your healing done. Uh, so it it uh, you know it'll take him a few minutes to cast all of those spells and then get to you. So you're gonna wait a few minutes. Well, yeah. Well, unless um, Parry's got anything to heal me with, which I'm not he sure actually he used all of his healing. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, I, during I can't combat, do anything other than that. So I'm so I'm basically gonna sit here and like. I'm gonna worry, sit, obviously, but I'm sit gonna, there cross-legged gonna, in the bones I'm, in the darkness. I'm, I'm gonna sit there, like trying not to die, um, <laughs> holding your blood in. Yeah, hold it, hold it, like pressure on my wounds. That's all. Yeah, like for, from a physical standpoint, you might not have a lot of piercing wounds, but you've been bludgeoned the shit out of. Alderax yeah. hits you with his pushing ray multiple times, just basically knocking you into the air backwards 15 feet <laughs> clattering into the bone so you are like bruised in like contusion to hell yeah, not in yeah. a good not a good physical state so you kind of compose yourself uh take take in the 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 surroundings this the the smells of the the old bones in the air and just those the the dead silence after those screams finished reverberating throughout the caverns and but from behind you you hear the footstep of footsteps of your compatriots as they approach. Tyburn's going to use one of his last healing spells uh, to heal you. Uh, let me pull up his his doodle here. Well, how much health do you have? Zero. Oh, he he knocked you unconscious. Yeah, I'm properly. Okay, so um, Tyburn. Let me get my. Let me give you. Let's see. Where is his shit? It's in here. So Tyburn. All right. Spells. Oh, I love this song. Dun 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 dun. So healing word. Uh, it was four D. Uh, three D four plus spell casting modifier. At second level. So. Tyburn's spell casting is wisdom. Tyburn's wisdom is three, so three d four plus three. Uh, let's see here. Let's, I'll just roll this up here. Oh shit! I've just realized something. What? Your audio is not coming through. Oh, is it not recording my side? Mm-hmm. Right. right so <laughs> Start well, that again. Start that again. Well, you can see you, it's just a little bit of fluff information. Fluff, basically. Okay, so Tybert heals you for ten HP. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so at this point, at this point, I'm gonna say that because uh, I, I, I'm not precisely sure where Tybert was on spells. I'm gonna say that was his last uh, spell slot, yeah. and and you guys are spent at this point. So just to catch people up. Hello, this is a secret private session to which you'll be seeing after the next D and D session, even though this is happening before. So um and basically it's carrying on from where the last session that we played at this point, when Elric went into the hole, left off. Mm -hmm. I have just been recovered from the ground um by the rest of the party and we hear no I heard a scream and then nothing in the darkness of the under underdark. Where we are, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm actually gonna. We're completely spent, but you got the the party for for uh you know for the sake of the narrative here the party is spent on spells. Oh yeah, completely. Um, I kind of want to get us a little bit closer to check and then leave. Okay, so 
I just need to, because I don't know if Crimson's alive or not at this point. Mm -hmm. So you guys, with the party, Sans Elric, uh, back together, uh, Aquilus takes the lead as he is pretty much full on health and has a, a, a melee weapon. And you guys carefully make your way past the Temple of Orcus, looming up to your to your left into the darkness. Kind of gives you an uneasy feeling as you pass it too. Like you through through the columns, you can see that half finished bone sculpture kind of rising up uh, uh, from the pedestal in front of uh, the statue to Orcus. But uh, you you make it past. You see none of the. Uh, of the dead, de uh, dozens of you, de dedizens? How do you say that? Dedizens? dedizens? Inhabitants. There we go. Synonyms, they work. Inhabitants. Uh, they seem to have, uh, scattered off into the darkness. Uh, as you make your way forward, you see the, the, kind of the mud hut where you first met, uh, Slavobor, the last Count of Rend. Um, dark and quiet. The still... Kind of like stench of burned flesh and charred thatch kind of permeating the air. Make your way past it. The giant now uh, ravaged pile of corpses that Alderax had looted for that one Durgar wearing a magical set of armor at the bottom of it, it's now strewn across the ground. Instead of in one nice heap, there's just this pile, this spread out pile of, of rotting awful. Uh, and behind that, there are the three perfect vertical shafts that lead down into the ground in front of you. One completely filled to the brim uh, with untold ages of bone. The other two vacant and gaping in the darkness. I'm going to slowly creep up to the one that we know that Mr. The Worshipped um, flew out of. <laughs> That's Dr. The Worshipped, thank you very much. <laughs> and um, I'm going to kind of hands and knees peer over the edge. All right, so you get down on your hands and knees right up to the edge, kind of white knuckled, gripping the edge, and look over, and all you see is darkness. <sighs> Do I shout for Elric? Do you? I'm going to shout for Elric to see if he's okay. All right, so you cup your hands over your mouth and shout his name down the hole, and you can hear it reverberating off the solid stone uh, walls as it goes down and down and down, and then dissipating, and you hear nothing. <laughs> okay. I'm going to turn to the party and sorrowfully tell them that we should leave. You're going to leave him down there. We don't have the uh, equipment or the power to go get him. Uh, not right now, anyway. We need okay. at least a day. All right, see you in a bit. Sorry, my wife was just uh, exiting. It's fine. What I was just I was just saying to the party that we need at least a day to recover before we look for Elric. Which so you guys are going to retire to Harsh Allen, House Allendale and yeah. uh, take a long rest? I think so. Okay. So, sorrowfully, you guys turn your backs on the last known location of <clears throat> your, your personal friend and compatriot in battle, Elric, and you guys make your way back across the Undercroft to the dangling rope that leads up back into the new manor of House Allendale. Everyone gets back up to the, climbs back up the rope with, with ease. It's been, you've just done this a few times now. It's not terribly difficult. Uh, to the sacrificial chamber that you visited several times before. Push the stone pedestal back over the hole, retrieve the rope, and take the long, 20 to 30 minute uh, climb up the stairway back into your basement. What would you like to do when you return? Just take the long rest? I'm going to have to take the long rest, yeah. Tired, worn out from battle, injured, bruised, contusioned, and cut. Everybody wordlessly retires to their rooms, having 
w w having been through an ordeal that the party had w was not used to or had and, and not had not you know come across before this is this was where you guys have fought battles uh to to progress before this was the first time you guys fought a battle m for your mere survival everybody takes their long rest the night passes uneventfully spell slots are restored <laughs> hp is back to the top what would you like to do i'm gonna um, ask the party if they'd like to venture with me to uh, try and find elric or at least find his body well at this point uh aquilus takes the opportunity to inform you that this is not what he signed on for these are horrors behind uh b beyond his kin the, the, these are adventures where your very life is is at stake, and he's not willing to risk his life anymore. I, I sigh and I say to him, I, I completely understand. Uh, you have been an asset to us, for better or for worse. Please tell me and, to use air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Not in front of him. Um, <laughs> and I wish you all the best. But I'd say that that's the perfect time for you to, to just use the word assets and cut a, a a quick look over to your sides that that's normally filled with Elric, only to realize he's no longer standing there. Aww. Aww. <laughs> the strange undead wood elf. Uh. So with that, Aquilus is going to retire to become an NPC in the town. Yes. Um, he is trained as a blacksmith, and the town does have a uh, a blacksmith uh, in it. So he will now be an NPC uh, in the he town makes of Rent. No money. <laughs> well, he makes 20% of his total money. He promised 80% of it away. Like the fool he is. <laughs> Adventure the fool, blacksmith the fool. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, I mean, when when he tried to make it, literally, when he tried to make a deal, the first, the first thing, I mean, I thought we were in a negotiation, and the first yeah. thing the guy he was talking to, the head of the guild, said was, "I want eighty percent of your total revenue," and he just stuck out his hand and said, "Deal." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, oh, I would, oh. I would have settled for 20. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But, but anyhow, it's on you. What would you like to do? I'd, I look at the rest of the party and say that my question still stands. So you're going to go search for Elric, is that it? I think so. We at least owe it to him to find his body if he's dead. Like <laughs> The rest of the party agrees. Tyburn and uh, Peridox and uh, Coswin agree that... It's only fitting. Cost one less, less, uh, less. So more, more going along with the 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 threat of the of the conversation than actively uh, wanting to recover the body. Ag agrees that it would be in in your best interest to recover the body, if not for the body, at least for the magical items. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot he's carrying magical items. Right. Yeah. So I guess we progress down again. Okay. Into the deep dark. Uncover the hole. Climb back, all the way down. Back down into the Undercroft. Uh, when you get down there, the 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 scent of of charred bone and and spent oil lingers heavily in the air. The unused barrel of oil still sitting there, where it was left during the battle. I'm gonna quickly make your... put that into my bag. I think. Okay, so you go. You, you take the bag of holding, and because this thing is pretty heavy, probably just <laughs> push the bag down over it rather than put the barrel in the bag, and whoop, its its weight disappears. The bag of holding weighs the same five pounds. It is always weighed and always will weigh. Make your way back across the Undercroft, past the Temple to Orcus, which still gives you that eerie feeling like someone's watching you as you pass it. Like there's that that prickle on the back of your neck. Like there's an unseen set of eyes somewhere in the darkness watching your movements, but it, it passes as the temple fades into the distance behind you. You make your way back to the ho the hole. Uh, as soon as you get there, um, uh, Tyburn starts fashioning together several sections of ropes to throw down into the hole. Did you want to do anything to progress alone, or did you want to rope it down? 
I'm not going to rope it down. I'm going to wait for them to get the rope, just because my strength is quite poor. But it's what okay. I am going to do is I'm going to cast Fly using my loot on myself. Okay, so while Tyburn is tying four lengths of rope together, just for safety's sake, because you don't know how far down this goes, um, you take out your loot, you strum your, 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 your tune of flying, and... It's happened a couple times now before. The familiar weightless sensation overcomes you and you just rise slightly off the ground as Tyburn takes his uh, several hundred feet of rope uh, coiled and just tosses it into the blackness below you. I'm just grabbing a prop, you know. <laughs> Look, I'm actually going to play a tune with it. Who's first? Or oh, down into the hole. Mm -hmm. Did you want to send someone else down to the hole first, or would you like to float down on your own? I, I, I'm going to send someone to... Um, well, I think... Parry should climb down while I float with him. If it's wide okay. enough. Okay. So, uh, Parry grabs the rope, hold, holding one hand in front of him and one behind, starts belaying down backwards into the hole as you float down with him, and... Well, the other uh, the other vertical shaft you guys have descended to to get to the undercroft. I got to turn this down a little bit. It's a little high on my end. Okay, fair. It's just I got that that issue where, um, hang on, where I, my computer auto ducks. So when you're uh. talking, it sounds great. But if you're not saying anything, the auto ducking turns off and the volume goes way up. And there's no way to turn it off that I'm aware of, and it's really annoying. But anyway. The Babushka's uh, music. Yeah, this is Giagushka the Babushka. Um, uh, the the first vertical shaft that leads from that sacrificial chamber down into the undercroft itself. There's only about forty feet of solid stone, and then about forty or fifty feet of you know you know dangling rope. This one it seems to be several like a hundred, a hundred fifty feet of just this perfectly carved smooth shaft as it goes lower and lower and lower. And it takes a little couple minutes of you guys, because Perry's going pretty slow, having to manually belay himself down before he gets to the, a point where his feet touch edge, and he's a little nervous to progress any further down. Okay. So but he does. He doesn't know what's below him. I will. But his his heels kind of got to the point where they kind of went like got to the lip, and and kind of stumbled a little bit. Um, so I'm just checking my bag. I am gonna get... Um... I'm gonna get my mess kit out, and... Because there's a metal, like, tin thing. I'm gonna drop it and see if it clanks on anything. All right, so you rub it around in your bag of holding for a second, pull out a what was that, a pot or a pan or something, yeah, and drop it. And just a few sec, maybe two seconds go by, and then you hear it clattering on what sounds like hard stone below you. I'm gonna float down and touch the stone. Okay, so you, as, as you start flo floating down past the the lip of this vertical shaft. And what you see before you is it's it, it's a hall of towering uh, square pillars elegantly carved that just stretch endlessly for, into one direction. You turn your head and stretch endlessly in the dark behind you. You see polished, smooth, square flagstones just perfectly set together into the ground. All absolutely polished smooth and as you look down you see the large slumped body of Alderex the uh, the worship a number maybe five or six um, crushed bodies of the uh, the inhabitants of the undercroft and hands still on the hilt of the sword buried up and uh, to the hilt inside the side of Alderex the worship you see the unmoving body of Elric. Um, so we've stumbled into the mines of Moria, and uh, there's dead everywhere. Right, cool. Um, I'm gonna You fly. see no other movement. 
I'm going to fly no to, straight to Elric. Just going to head straight there. All right, so you float uh, right down to Elric, and he is cold, unmoving, hands he still gripping. He was already undead, so I do need to check. <laughs> hands, his hand is still gripping the sword, the 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 handle of the sword, as it's as it's you know plunged into the body of Alderax. So he's definitely dead, unfortunately. Um, okay, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna ungrip his hand from the sword. Um, as you as you go to pull it away, as you, you kind of grab his wrist and try to pull it away, it seems like there's some like like there's a force holding it to the hilt of the sword. Like like even in his in his his death, he seems unwilling to part with the item. Make a strength test. Oh shit! Oh yeah, because it's got that he doesn't want to put it down thing. Yeah, he rolled a fucking 20 on not wanting to put it down. So as as uh, so you you grab his wrist and start and start pulling it and it, it this is kind of a uneasy moment for you, you know, grasping the 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 deceased wrist of your of your friend and trying to remove his prized possession. Well, and that was a save as well, not a oh, uh, same fine. same roll. It's not a big deal. Um your your hand kind of shudders a little bit on uh, on his wrist, and it causes the blade to rather move horizontally just a little bit rather than a vertically, and slice a, a little bit into the flesh of Alderax, and you see a little bit of blood flow out of the the wound that you have have made, and the body shudders a little bit. Oh no, he's still alive. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna lift Elric into the bag. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. If he's already... Oh. Well, technically, I was working this out. As he was already dead, we could have already put him in the bag and him been absolutely fine. Because it only stops breathing. Uh, and he didn't need that. <laughs> so I've just realized that I could keep an army of skeletons in a bag and just throw them out <laughs> if I wanted to. But no, if I'm you were a necromancer, you surely sure could. I oh, know. <laughs> just be like one of those little like fake cans of <laughs> <laughs> cans of snakes. So you think? Yeah. Oh, pow! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, someone needs would, to make that happen. Would Sorry. you like some peanut brittle? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, because that would kill me. Um, All right, so you uh. You, you kind of take a, a wary step back away from the body. It, you, you see it, it's, it's no longer hovering. It's just laying on the ground and just kind of shifts and shudders just a little bit and then kind of settles back down. And now that, you, uh, that you, you're paying closer attention to the actual form of Alderax, you can still see where he had these big, huge veins that ran just under his thin skin. You can see kind of these iridescent pulses of energy every once in a while just very slowly through the veins underneath his skin regenerate uh you you go to you go to to elric's feet and and it's kind of like trying to f fit a like a sleeping bag back into its its <laughs> no. case yeah. like like you want to get it in there the and it's going in there like... but you kind of gotta shove it in you get oh, it's you like get... getting a piece of a4 paper into like a plastic wallet yeah. Those, 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 you're like, yeah. Uh, it's gonna oh, go no. in. It, it it physically the dimensions work, but it's a it's it's a tough sell. Like you get them up to the knees pretty evenly, then you're kind of having to hold the bag open, like trying to hoist his 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 weight into there. And you get it, it takes a minute, but you get him all into the bag, except for this one arm that's still dangling out of it, with its hand grasped onto the sword. So he's in the bag. Except for his arm, which is still holding onto the sword. Okay, I'm going to pull his arm so the sword comes out. All right, so... trying to take the sword away from his body. In, 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 this time, instead of trying to remove his, his hand from the sword, you just pull the, the sword out, you know, following the wound path. And it makes this kind of, like, like suction, like sick suction-y sound as it pulls out of the... Out of the uh, 
the beast's great body, and uh, with it free, you're able to easily fit the arm and the sword back into the bag. Okay. So Elric's in the bag. I need to... L okay, I'm going to look around for any other items that might have been displaced, such as my shield. Uh, you you take a... Do a perception check. Do a perception check. Uh... Ooh. Okay. So you, you, you look out, you do a quick look around the area and you don't see your shield anywhere. Then you remember that Alderax was carrying it using one of his tendrils and there's a good chance it's underneath his body. Because okay. his form looks like it weighs several hundred pounds, maybe 600 pounds, something like that. He's a big guy. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to look around his body specifically, see if it's poking out anywhere, the bottom of his body. Uh, you, you look around and he's, he's laying kind of um, like in like, you know, like, like a three quarter pose with his face kind of into the ground. Um, you see most of his large eye with its, its lid shut and his mouth slacked open. And you can see that uh, all of he had four tendrils underneath kind of his mouth area. Those are all underneath his body. Every once in a while, you can see movement behind the great eyelid, kind of like REM movement. Um. Right, I, hmm, hmm, uh, I am going to cast, this, Thunderwave, try and move him, ah, Sweeps from you, each creature with a vision or a constitution save there on a failed throw, the creature takes two to thunder damage, is pushed ten feet away from you. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much. In addition, unsecured objects that are uh, completely within the area of effect are automatically pushed ten feet away from you by the spell. To thunderous boom audible for uh, out to 300 feet. Okay. Yeah, it's going to make a lot of noise, but... Uh... So, you, uh, you take just a step back from, uh, from Alderax and you know, think for just a second about this. Is this a good idea? You look at the stone pillars and the the polished, smooth stone floors and ceilings and think, I gotta get my shield back. You cast <laughs> you cast Thunder Wave. Because he's out, he automatic he's going to automatically fail this uh uh this save. And the uh the concussive force blows him kind of like head over heels uh away and all of the bodies of the um, the primitives that were kind of fallen down on top of him and laid around him. They all just go scattering off ac across the floor. Some of them, their their arms and legs twisting and contorting it in, in odd, unnatural ways as the, the force hits them and, like, knocks joints out of place. You hear a, like, a heavy, deep, like, groan come from Alderax, and as he cartwheels over, you can see that the shield is, uh, the arm straps behind the shield are, are threaded through one of his tentacles, and they, and the shield slides up to, like, kind of like the end of his tentacle, where it, it kind of balloons out into more of a flat surface, gets stuck there, and then you, you lose sight of it as he goes head over heels away from you. Okay, I'm gonna try and grab the shield and pull it off of him. Okay, so you quickly run over, run over to him, uh, uh, well, grab the shield. You're use the oh, you're flying, right? I'm Woo! Still flying. <laughs> <laughs> Super binge. <laughs> uh, so you you just kind of fly, uh, you know, do your little woo, uh, over to him. Um, immediately grab the shield and start slide. It doesn't it doesn't take much. He's kind of slimy. It's mm. just kind of like it just takes a little bit of force to get it past that area where it kind of balloons up. And yeah. you, you pull the, the, the shield off and kind of like put it on my back. Get get a little bit of get like like whip a little bit of that that slime off of it. 
and, and secure it to your back. As soon as you're done with that, um, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, these are that thing on... Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, nothing happens. Okay. Um, but what you do notice is, well, before there was just this great, like, uh, like this dark brown orange eyelid pulled over the eye. Now there's just this wide crescent shaped iris staring at you. You can see the eye just moves ever so slightly, taking you in. Mm. Jaw kind of stretches a little bit. And you can see a little bit of, like, dark blood starting to uh, uh, seep out from behind the teeth. I'm going to use... Oh, hold on. I'm going to use suggest. this. Okay, I'm what are you gonna... trying to suggest? I'm going to try and suggest that he, to him that he's dreaming and that he should close his eyes. All right. You suggest a course of activity limited to a sensor to magically influence a creature. You can see within range. I can hear and understand you. Creatures that can't be charmed or immune to this effect. The suggestion must be worded in a manner as to make the course of action sound reasonable. Asking the creature to stab itself or okay, the target must make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save. It pursues the course of action you describe to the best of its ability. Okay, so he needs to make a wisdom saving throw. So you cast uh, suggestion uh, on Alder on on the, the like slowly dying form of Alderex the worship, and. Uh, a, a, a moment goes by of silence, and then you just hear this kind of like deep, like wet throaty chuckle. Just, <laughs> and he 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 speaks uh, for the first time since the beginning. Uh, so, so since since you last saw him when he knocked you unconscious off your feet, just kind of he is as he laughs, kind of a little bit of that dark blood kind of spurts out of his mouth and sprays across the ground, ground in front of you. <laughs> You're a fool, Art Locks of House Allendil. Maybe, but it's a fool's world, and I'm going to fly up. And as I fly up, I'm going to grab the barrel out of the bag of holding, crack it, Light it and drop it. <laughs> oh and, God! And get Parry to fly, uh, and then um, sort of get Parry. I've, I'm going to shout up to Parry as to I start do it. climbing. Yeah, to start climbing. <laughs> All right. He's got his so, boots of spider walking, so like yeah. he can he can get up even quicker than because no oh, one yeah. came down. He can. He yeah, can yeah, up. definitely. Yeah, he can go pretty quickly. So, so you you fly, uh, you know, a few feet uh, above the body. Gra uh, you know, you know, get get the 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 head of that cask uh, out of out of the barrel. Pull the stopper out and just empty it on top of. Uh, yeah, uh, all, empty all the it a little bit. Light it. Drop it. <laughs> light it. Drop it. And and just. Whoosh, up uh perry sees you fly past him lets go of the rope and just starts vertically running, <laughs> running. <laughs> up the side of the shaft using his boots of spider walking um you hear a like a soft and you can you can see the flames the uh, uh kind of kind of rising up uh below you you don't hear any screams or anything like that a moment goes a moment goes by and then there's a another cacophonous blast, mu much like your thunder wave uh, sound, only uh, louder. And you could see this this pressure wave of iridescent energy just <sighs> up through the shaft past uh, Perry and pa and past you, and then the flames are gone. Just gonna keep going. Just gotta keep going. Came back for our spotty. That's all we did. Back back up to the top. You and. Perry make it without uh, any further incident. Okay, so I'm gonna tell everyone we should go. Um... <laughs> from, from the other characters' perspectives, all they heard was two loud explosions, basically. <laughs> yeah. 
you went down there, and then there was a there was a loud explosion followed like 10, 30 seconds later by another loud explosion. So you guys are done down here? For now, at least. Okay. Back up to, to the manor house. And what else would you like to do? Um, so, obviously they close up the mm -hmm. um, thing. And then with seal, seal the undercroft. Seal the undercroft. Um, I then would like to um, check on the people in town. All right, so not a lot of time, uh, time has passed since uh, you guys started this adventure. Uh, the people in town are, as, as they were before, basically settling in. You've got your 20 guards and a few odd, you know, a few odd people here and there. That's about it for, for right now. Um, so was there anything specific you want to take care of before we do the three-month jump and I inform you of the... Uh, Outcomes. Outcomes, yeah. Because um, I've got, I made a list over here. Okay, so you wanted to bury Elric in the cemetery uh, in Mortem, correct? Yes, next to his wife. That'll take a week, and it'll cost you 90 gold for a headstone. Or you can bury um, him in an unmarked grave, and it'll cost you nothing. But it'll still take a week to get there and back. Yeah, um... I'd like to do that, and I think some of the party members will probably come with me, but I don't know that. So, because I'm Tyburn Ty Ty and Coswin wouldn't, Perry would. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that, but beforehand, I want to like, I want to before we do the jump, I want to go talk to Mister Thingy in the Babushka. Um, uh, Giagushka. And to see if he would be hmm. able to transport a letter for me. Okay, so. Uh, Gigusha's, uh, building that he has procured is quite easy to see. He's set up, um, uh, like, a colorful awning outside the, the, the front of it, and you can see, um, bright curtains hanging on the inside of the, where, where windows used to be. Now there's just these bright, thick drapes hanging. It, it, it sticks out quite, uh, quite starkly against the, just dull grays and browns that is the entire valley, valley before you where this building now has bright colors spouting from nearly every like orifice on it uh you you enter the building and very uh quickly notice that this is a magical shop hmm. he has he already has um like very ornate wood and glass display cases set up filled with uh, odds small baubles odds and ends you see um, like a uh, a menacing looking dagger in there you you see uh, like a, a shelf set up um, with little indents in it for potion bottles and you can see a number of people just milling about putting items in their places uh, cleaning uh, laying down rugs and stuff it's it, there's about half a dozen people in in the building and you can in Gigush is behind this counter just kind of like he just like takes like this little ring and moves it like a millimeter to the side looks at it gives himself an, a, 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 a reassuring <laughs> nod what would you like to do I'd like to say, uh, uh, yeah, um, how goes setting up? Mm, it's wonderful. I'm glad to hear. Um, I have a query for you. Indeed. Um, what can I do for you? I need to get a letter to uh, my father in the kingdom to the south, would I be able to purchase a slot on whenever you next uh, have a voyage heading that way? Mm -hmm. Yes, but it would not come cheap. What did you have in mind? Well, a passenger slot on my ship costs 1,000 gold pieces. I would only require the letter to go if one of your men may deliver it when you arrive. Letter in person, it makes no difference to me. Thousand gold. These, these trips, they are, they do not come cheap. They are few and far between. 
Every expedition is uh, quite a a hit to my bottom line. Well, how about if I secure your bottom line a bit more? And what did you have I, in mind, Ardox? I am going to offer out. Uh, I already have uh, the building for free. I already do not pay taxes. What do you have to offer me? Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to grab out the the pearl ring, mm -hmm. the um, band from the other count, mm -hmm. and the random grey glue, goo. Ah, yes! And because I've never used them, the eyes are charming. Okay. So you pull out these items, put them on the uh, on the display case in front of you. Are you offering these as payment? Yes. <clears throat> Yugushka uh, looks down at the, the pearl ring. He kind of holds it in front of his eyes for a second, kind of like gazing into that, that iridescent quality of the pearl, like really close to his eye. He puts it down, and he does the same thing with, with, with each item in front of him. And he looks at you and he goes, you offer these as payment for your leather. Indeed, I do. It is a deal. Very good. I will deliver the letter tomorrow. Excellent. My ship will depart in seven days. It will take some time for you to hear a response. They will not. They are not due back for months. I only have. Uh, yeah, time is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a time is time is irrelevant. Fuck your ship. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah, I so, gonna, um, Gigoshi accepts payment of the the items for transit of the letter. He uh, agrees that he will personally deliver it to your father, and you uh, give the location, the address, the town, and the mm -hmm. letter the next day. Um. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab Elric's body out of the bag because obviously, like that's... in the shop. No, 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 no. I'm gonna take it back to the house. <laughs> I right, take it back to the house. I'm gonna grab some of the like nice sheets and stuff um, from inside the manor, and I'm gonna put them on the back of the cart. Mm -hmm. And. Um, And yeah, I'm. I'm gonna um, place Eric on it. Put the sword on his chest, like you know. Yep. How they bury like a knight. Like tra 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 traditional I'm, crusader pose. I'm gonna um, because obviously he doesn't. Are you going to? You're leaving the sword with him. I'm leaving the sword with him. Yes, but nothing. Not anything else. Just his armor, his clo um and his sword. Did he have any other magical items? Yes, the bow. <laughs> the bow. Okay, so you're 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 keeping the bow. Yes, um, but I'm not keeping it to use. I'm gonna put it in the house somewhere on display. Uh, and he had his cloak. And his cloak, yeah. Well, yeah, the cloak that we found and the the rip one. Yeah, I'm gonna take that. Mm -hmm. Because his 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 thing of uh, hiding the undead was already gone. Got eaten. Yeah, Alderax took that. Yeah, that was a weird conversation. That was. Uh, but uh, so yeah, and then I'm gonna ask, uh, and Parry wants to come with me. So mm -hmm. just before I leave, I'm gonna go put in my order with um, what's her name? Oh, I've had I wrote her name down. Um, uh, Matilda. Yes, Matilda for the uniforms. For the, um, for the for the tabards. Okay, um, the tab tabards for the guards will cost 200 gold pieces for the materials. Uh, She's yeah, making two two tabards per, per guardsman and then 10 extras. Okay, and uh, I, I kind of want to add to that. Could she do one for me that's a little bit nicer that would like, well, more, less tabard, more cloak and stuff that goes with the breastplate. You want you you want like a uh, one of those like um, the fuck uh, 
Like What's a that movie with Benedict Cumberbatch. Many films. Doctor <laughs> Strange, like like a doctor, like one of those Doctor Strange uh, cloaks, where it's like asymmetrical over the shoulder and covers the front as well. Didn't think about that. Yeah, but without the collar, do the more like. But but without but without the big collar, but it yeah. covers the back. It looks like a three quarters thing. It covers your back and goes asymmetrically across yeah, the front. Yeah, like with uh, and you put like a big thing there so it attaches to the breast yeah thing. so so after that all you need to do is enchant it so you can you, you can use it to fly yeah and then find some sort of object like go to mechanicus and and, and find an object that you control such time and you'll be dr strange yeah it'll be great and yeah. i think that that like dr strange and a bard are quite similar things it's just a bard yeah. is dr strange without with music it's like yeah I could already create create big swirly patterns and things. Like, why not? Mm -hmm. Why not go the full hog? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so it'll sh that'll cost uh, let's say an extra ten gold, so two ten for that whole order. Yeah. Okay. Um, two ten. And, gold. She, and and um, the way she's gonna make these is one side is gonna be white with the um, the 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 the. Uh, the closed gauntlet of helm on it and the mm -hmm. other side is going to be that dark green color with that tree with the roots so it's going to be split oh, vertical no, it's uh, the blue oh, is it one the blue one the, yes, blue, the blue one with one. the ship so the green okay. the green one was elric's logo okay so uh it's going to be split vertically and there's going to be one side is going to the left side is going to be white with the gray symbol mm -hmm. of helm with the eye in it and the other side is going to be blue and it's going to be like the prow of a ship cutting through the waves yeah cool um so your house colors are like white in in dark blue. Mm. That's what I went with. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna pack my things and mm -hmm. set out to go bury Elric, I guess. Okay, so uh, it takes a few because you're moving from my my people's point of view. They're moving from here all the way down to here. That's a few days journey there, a few days journey back, uh, and they've got a bit of a load with them. So you guys, uh, you you make the journey, dig the grave, inter Elric next to his deceased wife. Are you marking the grave with anything, or are you just leaving it unmarked? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a head headstone. All right, so you're actually you're gonna purchase a headstone. Or you're just gonna use a stick or something. No, I I want to leave some words on there, so. All right, so uh, for a headstone, uh, like a standard headstone that's, you know, just a big slab of, like, granite with his name on it and some words, cost you 90 gold pieces. Okay. I will, uh... And I'll say that that, you know, getting, you know, you know, you went to Karna, uh, placed the order for that, they delivered it, that's part of the week. Yeah. Okay, I can, uh, 90, so that's... Uh, just keeping an eye on all my money. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and on the headstone, I'm gonna say I'm gonna have his name, Elric. Um, I'm gonna put the date of death. I don't know his date of birth. And then I'm gonna write the words. Um, Here lies a man who lived and died to protect others. A friend always. And um, as I leave, I'm gonna, I'm gonna apologize because he died for me. I'm writing that now, just in case it needs to come up later. All right. Yeah, I've got I've got notebooks of notes, literally multiple notebooks, oh, yeah. and I got multiple notebooks. I've got I've got index cards. <laughs> I use I use out. Google Docs, and I have like nine Google Docs now. Mm -hmm. Some in a public folder, some not in a public folder. Mm -hmm. All right. So Elric is is interred laid to rest next to his wife who's died decades past and you return to your fledgling town uh tyburn this is uh departed when you come back he spends his time spreading alms for the poor he went to he spends a lot of time at the temple 
Um, it takes temple funds and spreads uh, alms in Karna in the surrounding region, trying to foster goodwill. And Clos okay. is already uh, in the the blacksmith attempting to set up shop. He's um, acquired <laughs> I like some. That, I like that you said attempting. <laughs> hmm. It's it's Aquilus. Yeah. Um, he's uh, he's acquired materials, but you can see that his haphazard like reconstruction of roofed sections is you know like a kid's fort. Like <laughs> it's there, but it doesn't look like it's too sturdy. I'm just getting that Simpsons episode where they build a fort out of cardboard boxes now, and all the UPS yeah. guys coming at it. <laughs> uh, Coswin is uh, setting up guard rotations, spending a lot of time with the uh, the twenty hirelings, getting getting to know them, getting to know their um, their 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 strengths and their weaknesses, setting up the guards rotations, helping them get uh, accustomed to the area. Okay. And you and NG return. Now, what Love. would you like to? What else would you like to do on, on your list of things? Because we've already knocked off a good a good amount of them. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I've got to get the list open. Hold on. Uh, the, uh, oh. hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, hmm. I'm going to talk to the the, the the military guys and um, start putting in that plan in action. Uh, just the, the the guard rotations and getting them actively set up. Yeah, and and doing their doing their duty. Yeah, I know. I'd also like to give the elder captain um, a few more funds so that he can set up uh, adequate like training dummies. Okay, how much? Um, I gave him two hundred for repairs, didn't I? Uh, did. I'm gonna give him forty extra to get like wood and stuff to make dummies. Forty things. extra gold. Okay, that's good. Does that take me to a mine. clean number on my list? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't because you were being generous it's because you like a good round number no I, I want my men trained as well because I'm <laughs> scared of what Osti is gonna do alright that's uh, Bertram Bairn that's who you, who, who yeah, you gave Bertram, it to Bertram that's the guy Bertram and, and because, because it's come up before every single one of these NPCs has stats oh yeah um there's there is 16 men. There are four women. They are range from ages 15 to 62, and they all have brought uh, whatever personal weapons and armor they had at their disposal. So some of them have um, no armor. Some of them have chain armor. Some of them have uh, a good number of them have leathers or studded leather armor, and they're all ju it's just all haphazard. It's it's uh, longbows, shortbows, uh, a large hammer, lots of long swords and short swords and stuff like that. It's very ad hoc. I, I want to. Yeah, can I um talk to them to see what um like the actual division down is of everyone? Like, what do you mean? How many bowmen have we've got? How many? Random hammer guy. Have we got? Have we... <laughs> you've got you've got one gentleman. Oh wait, actually, never mind. Uh, it ranges from ages fifteen to ninety-two, not sixty-two. Wait, wait, the ninety-two-year-old man is the one with the great hammer. Oh, well, that's fine. That's gonna be fun to watch. <laughs> that, uh, yep. He can keep um, that. Um, he 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 has a very large like great hammer. No armor though. He's just in his like day-to-day -day traveling cl clothes. And uh, he seems seems a little worse for wear, if anything. Like 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 he maybe he was a hobo at one point before this. Okay, but fair. No. But you Good have let's see, you have four bowmen, three men, one woman. Let's see, they age uh, twenty nine, forty eight, thirty two, and forty six. So we we have groups of five on rotation, don't we? Was it? Yes. I can't remember. Okay, I'm gonna try it was to make five, sure. It was five men on four rotation, three active, one on rest. I'm gonna try to make sure that the archers are split up between the rotations. Okay. I know there's so there's one, one one bowman per per rotation. So each each group has, has a range. designated ranged yeah uh, like element to it. And then, but also in training times, if there's multiple groups, like. If there's times where they're all thing, I do want to like get like an hour in a day. Where like set up time together. where every si well, all twenty of them train as a group not, rather than yeah, not all just in their contraveniums. So like yeah, no, into their like weapon type so that there'll be archer trainers training time. Um, oh, okay. Be, 
yeah, there'll be the people with spears can work in a formation together. Um, that sort of there thing. There are a number of people who have con come unarmed too. Okay. Without weapons. Um, uh, I'm gonna. A Aquilus could, given the time, you know, given some some time to set up and and and, and get going, could can can provide low quality weapons. Just like like um, you know, the swords that the Urukai have in, in Lord of the Rings, like they look like more like bludgeoning weapons than yeah. swords. He could do stuff like that. Like he could make a sword, but it won't look good and it won't have a real sharp edge. But if you hit someone hard enough with it, it'll fucking hurt. Um, he could do that for the for the rest of the people. I'd rather him try to make something smaller and sharper. So get him to make like short swords. Uh, short swords. That's easy for him to do because like the Gladius style uh, short yeah. sword, double d double bladed and pointed, yeah, it's, is it's pretty it's... standard armament for this area. Yeah, so that's something it... he would be skilled enough to make. Again, they wouldn't be really good, but they would be functional. And some spears maybe because he can get them sharper without having to worry about making too much metal so like like enough spears for every like, well, when you say spears i'm assuming you mean like like a five or six foot like melee weapon or do you mean javelins uh i mean melee weapon okay and i would like to get a few extra of them maybe um just so like, like citizens two per person themselves. or no, or no, do you no, mean no. like bulk quantities just a, a bulk quantity of like like as many 30. as he can make of thirty, so we can put them in an armory somewhere. All right. So you said so you can set up an armory, and this, these wouldn't be these wouldn't be items that the people would person that the guardsmen would personally carry. They'd be extra weapons yeah, in case it would of emergency. Be, yeah, it would be okay. We're heavily under attack. If you need a weapon, run to the armory. Yeah, okay. And grab a spear. Okay. So he, uh, oh, Aqu Aqu Aquilus will be able to do that. Yeah. Um, hang on one second. Just let me grab some. Get my. Uh, some information I left in the living room. I love it. Ben's just got D and D notes all over his house. Apparently, um, God damn that Florida man. Um, but anyway, I hope you're all enjoying this private session. My D and D binder. Oh, there we are. You know, I was just thinking, sometimes it makes me sad when I make entire maps, like, hand-drawn that don't get used, but I can reuse these later for anything. I just move it. Yeah. I, I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, God, the guys never went there. They can go there later. It's fine. Yeah. You give us a reason to. We can go there later. Let's see. Okay, so each, uh, each spear will cost one gold uh, to produce at cost. Mm-hmm. And let's see. And each short, uh, each short sword would cost ten gold to produce. I'm and gonna try and negotiate a lower price. It's it's Aquilus. He'll agree to pretty much anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'm gonna persuade it. So, how much did you say? It was uh, one gold for. Oh, uh, so the spears would cost thirty for the entire lot, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven people came without. 11 of the 20 came with no armament whatsoever, and the bowmen came without, with just the bow and no melee weapon. Okay, so... Um, so that's 15 people have no melee weapon, and 11 people have no weapons. I want 15 short swords then as well. So, so. 15 short sword, that would cost 150 gold normally. Well, what do you I'm gonna ask him to do... Um, uh, I'm gonna try and convince him to do 100 gold because it's more money than he's ever had for the lot. Uh, of which he would get to keep 20? <laughs> because he that's did, not my problem. Agreed. That's his problem. I mean, yeah, I, I know. Have, that's the... I have also just given them this blacksmith shop for free. Yeah. Like, he gives he gives you like a hearty sigh, but agrees to it. Oh, I was going to have to try and... I was going to do a persuasion check. Let's just see that's what one... I would have got. It's Aquilus. No, yeah, it's fine. I it would have been advantage enough. Then. Aquilus just means I get advantage, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, get a, you get advantage just because you're talking to him. Well, but yeah, be, that's hundred. Yeah. That's 130 gold for the for the, the weapons, and it'll take him probably two weeks to build those. No, it was 100 for it all. For it oh, all. Oh, 100 for everything. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. It was 100 for everything. <laughs> that's fine. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Scam. <laughs> All right, and, I, and I'm going to tell Bertram to um, keep checking on Aquilus for that. 
because I've put it in order. Yeah. Um, okay. I've done the tunic bit. Um, I'm going to uh, do the whole, I'm going to offer the guards full-time work and uh, invite them to move here with their families. Well, uh, they you already have, have given them full-time work. Their, well, their they've guards only been pay... paid for a month so far. You paid them for two months, actually. Two months, sorry, that was it, yeah. Two months yeah. and um, just say, well, the offer will stand past two months. Oh, okay, so you're, you're saying that uh, you, you want them to stay on past those two months ad infinitum. Yeah, I would just say, well, it's the offer is open to them because some people might not want to take up after two months. Like, they might want to go back and do something else for two months. They might be on the downtime while they're mm. not farming or something because it's the, winter. All, you get the sense that all these people were pretty down on their luck to have taken up, uh, you, you know, low-paying <laughs> guard work for for someone they've never heard of from a defunct area. So they're happy for the work. Okay, fair enough. But uh, uh, but many of them, you, you you get a couple like you know, like like ha like happy wide eyed grins when you offer to uh, them to have their their families moved into the town to their free homes, which you have you have bequeathed to them. Hmm. Okay. Cool. So yeah, yeah, you're good there. Lovely. Uh, and then I guess next. Um... Uh, okay, uh, I'm just right. Marking these things is done with a star. Um, that's that bit done. Right, let's look into the economy and mm -hmm. sit down and plan the money. So first off, I'm going to go down and uh, maybe if Parry wants to come or... Sure! Um, may, and um, we're going to try and empty that pool of water. <laughs> Ah, okay. So you're going to, um, you're basically going to kind of attempt to dredge the pond. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me get the notes on the pond. <laughs> the notes on the pond. That's. I remember you. No, told... no, it's. Yeah. It's, I'm serious. I have a uh, three pages front and back of notes from the Undercroft. I have a map of the Undercroft, oh, cool. and then I have numbered. I, I have a numbered uh, pages of notes on everything that is at every item there. <laughs> Look at him. He's so proud of himself. <laughs> hey, I love doing this. Yeah, it's great fun. Uh, let me see here. I believe I have it written down in here as well, so I have to do math less. Ah, yeah, here we go. So, um... It, it it takes you probably two people. I would say it's gonna take you just a, you know, like a few days to do this. Um, the edges are really easy. All you have to do is wade in and kind of. Yes, I am. Uh, mm -hmm. Reach down and gra grab. My wife just came home. Um, <laughs> uh, gr grab the items. It's 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 easy. There are lots and lots of coins in here, and what you notice is that many of them are quite ancient you kind of look up at the ceiling and you notice that there's this this constant flow of water trickling down and then you think back to that well that you tested out when you first came to rend and and you think geographically it's probably Turret above you um it it, it yeah I, I would say about two days i mean it would take less time um you guys do have a, a potion of water breathing somewhere uh, Coswin's got that. Coswin's got that. So, so it's going to take you two days to okay. to dredge this out. What you managed to come out are 880 gold pieces. Okay. Uh, sorry, say that again. Uh, 880 gold pieces. 2,960 silver pieces. Mm-hmm. You find a number of gemstones to the tune of uh, that are worth about four hundred and eighty gold. You find ninety six hundred copper pieces. And let me find anything else in here. You find a number of those curse tablets that you found near the edge that um, are basically, you, you know, people carved them on, on, on wood, uh, you know, wood blocks or, or stone tablets. Uh, and they all are of the similar vein, like someone wronged them in some way. 
and they're asking for the gods to to punish the person who wronged them. All right, let's see. Okay. Gonna put those in our locked chest in the uh, in, in 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 the house, so no one can see them. Uh, mm-hmm. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Hang on a sec. I'm just looking for. Um, you find a uh, a javelin down there. Too bad our javelin throwers just left the party. Uh, you found you found a javelin down there. Anything special about this javelin, or is it just a javelin? It seems to crackle with energy. Ooh. Like, as you hold it, you can kind of... Uh, have you ever been electrocuted? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know that, that tingling feeling you get right after the fact, where it's just like, ooh. Yeah. As you hold it, you kind of get that feeling in your hand. Fair enough. Cool. <clears throat> um, and you find... Uh, weighted down at the bottom uh, a set of leathers, studded leathers. Okay. Weighted down? Mm -hmm. As in like someone tied it into a, like a bundle and like tied a heavy rock to it. And... Okay. Hmm. Interesting. But that's it. That's the thing he emptied. Mm -hmm. That's everything. Just because he's always um, a little bit upset with money, I'm going to give the silver from that to Parry. Okay, so that's... 2,960. Yeah, so that's nearly 300 gold worth of silver. Yeah. So So you lay you, you laid in him down with silver pieces that are quite heavy. I'll, I'll, I'll take them up for him, but I'll give them to him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you message Parry about that, uh, NG mm -hmm. about that, I just called him mm -hmm. by his character name. Oh, he's gonna kill me for that. Uh, probably. <laughs> right. Um. Then we've got a. I've got a fuck ton of copper about. Mm hmm I've got. I've probably got enough copper to re-smelt it and make copper armor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I melt it down and make make yourself a nice fancy suit of ceremonial plate. Yeah, like um, I've got between me and the private bank somewhere in the excess of twelve thousand copper. That, that's that's some that's some uh, that's pretty heavy. Yeah, so that's all gonna go into it. Well, I mean, that's several hundred pounds of copper. Oh yeah, I know. That's uh, that's gonna get exited out of the bag of holding um, when I get back up. <laughs> Just sit there for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just into like a big crate and yeah <laughs> then, and then i'll probably take it to kana to see if i can get it exchanged mm -hmm. um, uh yeah you you can actually do that if you want to there is a bank there yeah i will i will send someone to do that with the so gem. for the sake oh, for the sake of bread the gems but i don't um just before i finish off with the undercroft stuff mm -hmm. um I'd like to start. Um, I'd like to grab the rest of those barrels from the alchemy stuff, so I can take that yeah. to sell. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna. I'm if I can convince him, I want to try and convince Coswin to go sell that to the guy that I stole from. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. I'm also going to convince. Arcus to start working uh, on the books of the of rent, as in, so start writing out costs, how much we'll need to recover. Oh, it. okay. So basically, become like uh, com the commissioner. Well, he's um, his title is tre uh, is um, like treasurer. I think I've made him. Yeah, I've made him keeper of the coin, which is like. The... About to say that'd really help me out if we could call him the commissioner. The co oh, right. Uh, this is just to. Punch Roach in the face. Okay. Um, well, you can refer to him as that, but uh, as 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 commissioner or commissioner Arcus. Yeah, and I'm I'm also going to offer him if he doesn't want to live in the the fancy house anymore, he can take up a residence in town. Okay. Um, All right. He seems pretty pretty happy to live in a guest room in in, in the manor. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, did you just call it Midge Manor? <laughs> Midge Manor. Um, hey, okay. Penny. So get him to start like working out um, 
that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And um, get him to start noting foods we need. Where just we need just uh, the the day to day um, expenses of the realm, kind of thing. Yeah, stuff like that. All right, I can I can tell you right now that I know you said you mentioned hiring like a staff for for the manor. Um, you can hire on a full staff of of like cooks and servants and stuff to um, a, a, attend to the the manor for two hundred gold a month. Okay, I'll make a note of that. I probably won't do it just yet because uh, for staff, just because one the place doesn't have doors yet on the front still. Um, so I think so next, that happens when you blast the doors off of every building you see. Next, I think is going to have to be a trip to Karna. All right, what would you like to do there? So I'd like to find a carpenter to come fix the doors. Um, well, you already I, took care of that. Oh yeah, I did. I did. Um, you actually already paid them too. Yeah. So I'll just check up on how the doors are doing because I don't think mm -hmm. they've been in. Some the someone came yet. by and took measurements for them, then departed. Yeah. So you know, I'll check up session. on those. Um, I would like on this first trip to Connor. I think there's going to be quite a few. Um, I would like to try and find a bell, as in a small, like a lot, like 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 a cowbell. Cowbell. Yeah. Yeah, you could you could you could go to any. There's uh, there's the Iron Road at the back where all the yeah. blacksmith shops are. It's not hard to find a bell. Yeah, you can pick try. one up for just a just a pittance, basically. Yeah, I'll just um, take some of the what it would be the coppers that <laughs> I've got yeah. mounting up. Yeah, you um, can pay for that with coppers easily. It's a yeah. bell. Yeah, grab a bell, um, mm -hmm. and something to like attach it to. It's a rope. A, yeah, make a necklace sort of thing. Um, I would like to send Coswin if he came with us. Did I manage to get Coswin? Yeah, to come yeah, that's with us? fine. Yeah, uh, to go sell the um, barrels of brewing potions. Um, the the, all the, those the, the reagents. Herbs. Yeah, I'm gonna um, mm -hmm. before before Ooh. as we get into town, I'm gonna because we've taken the cart with us, and I'm gonna put all the reagents and everything, all, all the barrels into the cart, and then also all those sacks of dried herbs mm -hmm. into the cart, so he can go off and do that. Um, I'm gonna go talk to, I need to talk to, um, a blacksmith, but one that would work with more jewelry and things if possible. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, because I need to get a, mm. uh, sigil ring made up that I can use for wax stamps and things. Okay. Um, there are, all the blacksmith shops are set, set up like in... In, in one large area with this massive multi-storied warehouse behind them. And uh, while most there are some that deal with, you know, industrial equipment, some that are clearly making high quality armor and arms and stuff like that, there is one that has, you, you know, just by visual inspection, all the tools are of a much smaller, like instead of a giant anvil, there's like smaller ones uh, set up on tables and stuff like that. There's much finer instruments, and you can see just by walking by the, you know, the glint of, uh, of more, you know, rare and few and far between metals. It's not that difficult, and there seems to be an uh, a, a half orc working it. Uh, is it the same half orc that? was on the council. Bingo. What was his name? I don't think Tack I ever caught it. His name, his name was Tack Twobone. Tack Twobone. Um, I'm going to hail him. Hail him. Um, put him up on All screen. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> God, I just made a Star Trek joke. <laughs> <Deep> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, so you'd like him to... You'd like to commission a signet ring? Uh, yeah, a signet ring... Um, that I can use for wax stamps and things. Just okay, either, he can make... e either um, silver plate or gold plate. He, he can make you a, a silver one for 20 gold, he can, or he can make you a gold one for 40. Um, I, well, you just my... need to provide him with the the the, the imagery. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to... You need to draw it out. You just draw it out from there if you yeah, like. Yeah, I'll draw out the, the, the situation. and I'll... I'll mm -hmm. um, Ask him to do it in. 
I got 20 GP in my inventory. I'll just give him for the silver one. All right, so you'll have a silver one, and um, uh, he is willing to have it delivered to you, so you don't have to come back and get it. Oh, that'd be lovely. Um, All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. All right, and I, uh, I would also just like to make general... Um, pleasantries? Pleasantries with him. Um, Cause I Seems keep... like a gruff individual. He's got, you know, he's got that like protruding, slightly protruding uh, orc like lower jaw with these two mm -hmm. sharp, you know, they're not where, where there would be orc like fangs. They've been cut off kind of at the uh, at like the tooth line, so they're just these big, large, flat like plateaued surfaces. And he's got he's got one arm. And the other arm is uh, he's missing his hand like around like just above where the wrist is and you can see that his tibia and his fibia are sticking out and the the flesh is healed around it Ooh. i'm gonna i'm gonna ask him if um his injury affects his work if he'll entertain my conversation hang on one second ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. and there is no music in the background Ah, so if if you're wondering, um, me and Ben decided to do this session because there's three months um, gonna pass that you've just seen uh, between this and from the beginning of this session and the thing. And um, he asked us all for like a little thing. Oh, what do you want to do for those three months? And I sent him a three-page word document, and he went, "Okay, we're gonna need to sit down and talk through some of these things because obviously, I'm I obviously kind of needed this session because." I'm I'm running a kingdom. Yeah. All right, so you uh, you're trying to do what with tack now? I'm just trying to make friendly conversation. I'm trying to keep the seven on my side. That's one of my sub. Yeah, he see, he he comes off gruff but 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 friendly because you're a customer kind of thing. And it's in um it seems a little odd having someone so large working such such, such on like fine finery. jewelry and mm. yeah finery and stuff like that but um his his clothes are you know even though he's a blacksmith but his you know he wears fine finer linens and you know like a nice uh leather tunic it doesn't seem like he's worse for wear other than the missing hand mm. so, so i just wondered i'm gonna ask him how he got into jewelry uh hang on a second let me pull up tack notes tack notes Okay, um, Tack informs you that he his adopted human parents owned the, the shop that was left to him upon their demise. Oh, um, I'm sorry to hear of their passing, but, um... Mm. At this uh, point, he gets a little dismissive. Like, you, like a stranger is, is, is sorry for him. He's just like, Ugh. I was like, um, well, um, thank you for your time, and, um... Safe work, I guess. Mm. So um, you depart with your uh, your order. It'll be a few days, but yeah, he'll deliver you your fun. signet ring. Um, so I've got the bell. Got the bell. You got a signet ring. I need... I mean, I can tell you what's going to happen with Coswin in those barrels right yeah, now. Yeah, do that. Do that for a minute while I think um, this. He he comes across the the issue of you're offering to sell bulk quantities, and most most people even even like the um, uh, Thaddeus, the owner of that bookstore, who also dealt with potions. He's more interested in dealing with uh, uh, qu you know quantities for for individual use. So you're like, here, I've got a hundred pounds of this herb, and he's like, okay, I need four ounces. Yeah. Um. So you guys have the the issue of you have way more than any individual is willing to uh to purchase Cosman took the initiative to go to quintus darkmore the commodities trader who deals with qu bulk quantities of goods and he offered to take the entire thing off your hands for 4200 gold pieces everything yeah, yeah uh actually what's what's Coswin's? he's got good charisma skill he does Get him to try and get a little bit more if he can. 
Oh, okay, we could do a we could do some rolls here. Yeah. I get, do you want to roll charisma for a cost one? You guys have the same. The same. Do a persuasion check. Um, you have the same charisma, so it's okay. We have the same charisma, but I have other stats that affect mine. So. Okay, right, I'll, I'll roll. I'll you'll roll have to then. do it because. So. Uh, uh, do, because do, 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 I do have obviously one. like my actor trait and then bard, jack of all trades, and all that. So we're gonna roll a persuasion. Oh. Not even close. Okay, so I rolled, take the money I rolled a run. 19. Yeah, take the money and run. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> he unloads all the uh, the, the barrels of, um, you know, pungent liquids and the sacks of aromatic herbs for 4,200 gold pieces at the commodities trader, Quintus Darkmore. Okay. Um, takes it up to that. Fantastic. Um, I am going to obviously spend some time. I'm going to do like some performances in town, bring in some extra gold. Um, and do also... a per, per, roll a performance check for me. Yeah, okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, <Whoa. laughs> all right. You make 280 gold. Uh, I'm gonna put that into my personal purse because I don't have any money I, in there. I, you know, because you just I just thought of this other time. I was like, I'll give him ten gold for every every number he rolls. Okay. Um, well, aren't you glad that I didn't crit that then? Because my crit, <laughs> my crits are thirty. So. Mm. Um, and then I'm going to um, also start, you know, just talking to townspeople, telling them about Rend and mm -hmm. all that, all that normal stuff. Do you want me to roll? For I'd that? like you to do just a flat, uh, like a straight up charisma check. Okay. I'll be. Hello. Thank you. It's hot. Oh, okay, no, that is hot. That is hot. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Midge Mom. Oh. Got a cup of tea. Um. <laughs> Best thing about there's, there, being home, there, I think, is the there, fact that <laughs> parents will just walk in with cups of tea, and it's fantastic. <laughs> See, my my wife usually appears right about like off camera, right about here, like where my hand is, with a beer. Yeah. Um. So you uh you do some you know, like you every time you come back to Karna, you do your rounds. Um. You find some people willing to listen to your to your pitch, some people unwilling to listen to your pitch. Uh, mostly the it seems like the the poorer strata are the ones who are more willing to to mm -hmm. listen to you and in your pitch. Um, the the richer people tend to blow you off pretty quickly. I would yeah okay. I would like to um, also talk to um, if there's any groups of builders in t in um, oh yeah Kana. there's carp carpenters stonemasons like general contractors and stuff I, like that I, I want to hire some builders oh. and things to actually get the refurbishment of the town completely underway okay. like get a good force going oh. for 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 the sake of brevity here uh, I've already written all this all, all these costs down for the stuff you want done to the town okay. so we'll say you go you go to one of the contractors office and you have this meeting. Uh, I'm going to say that it'll. this will probably take place over the course of several days because he has to send people to the town to inspect it and, uh, and, and you know, check out the sites and stuff like that because there's a lot of stuff you want to do. Um, refurbing the entire town, uh, you, you know, and all the, the all you know, re-roof every single building, uh, you know, professionally and up to code. Um, and some uh, minor stonework and foundation work and stuff like that. Everything all said and done will cost 17,000 gold. 17,000. 17,000 okay. gold. The guardhouse you want built by the the stone guardhouse you want mm -hmm. built on uh, on the Rend side of the bridge near Ostia, that'll cost 6,700 gold pieces. 67. Uh, what about the market refurbishment? Uh, the market refurbishment was uh, put into the, the entire town. But if you want just the market, like where you wanted to have like stone stalls and stuff like yeah. that uh, built, uh, you're looking at 2000 for that. Okay, I'm going to pay him to get underway with that. Okay. Because I'm thinking if we... And then I'm going to... When that's going to be completed, I'm going to try and get that to be... Um, I'm going to get them... like That's going to be a way to make money because obviously market, traders will come mm -hmm. in, use the stalls. And you wanted to build a defensive wall across the mouth of the valley mm -hmm. um, that that leads that leads up to the run. To build a stone wall 
of four feet wide by ten feet tall will cost thirty-eight thousand gold. Okay. Um, now, all of this, uh, all this happening because you have actually talked to members of the council about things happening in in, in Randy. This uh, this information has got gotten back to them, and the uh, the the lords of Karna uh, are willing to allow you a line of credit for anything you do, uh, you know, any work that you requisition from Karna that they will underwrite. Right. Meaning that they will pay for the work themselves to which you will repay them later. Okay. With interest. With interest. That's what I was, I was waiting for the but. Um... Okay. Um, how much is the interest? Twenty nine percent over one year. Ooh, okay. Um, they 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 will lend you the money for the construction for over a one year period of time, to which you will pay them. Let's see. So um, the remaining the re remaining money. Hold on, I just quickly need that's it because I paid that's the two thousand off. Okay, so. You paid off the two thousand, so that says like what fifteen thousand for the town. So that's fifteen thousand for the town, sixty-seven hundred for the guardhouse, thirty-eight thousand for the wall. Now keep in mind that this this wall that they've quoted you is a stone wall of four feet by ten feet. It's only ten feet tall. If you want it, if you want a different type of wall to cost, you could you could have a wooden palisade built, or you could have a, lo a taller wall built if you want, but the price will change. But to, to to whatever whatever you do, the lord the, the the lords of Karna the seven will pay for it under those uh, conditions. So at the, at the moment we're at sixty k, which would put with interest you're looking at eighty something thousand. Yeah. To be re to be repaid in a year. They actually, uh, for the sake of brevity here, we'll say that you guys call a meeting, and, and this they call a meeting for you, and this is discussed. Yeah. Uh, and they actually put a contract in front of you. It's a lot of legalese, party of the first part, so I'll, you know, so we'll, uh, fourth, we called Art Law, Collendale, blah, 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 blah. But at the very bottom, uh, what, what stands out to you is that um, upon default of the loan, uh, the, the titles and lands of rent will pass to the uh, the lords of Karna if the loan defaults. Okay. And you have you have one year to pay it off. But because you are, the only reason they're willing to do this is because you are a noble. They would not extend a line of credit of 60,000 gold pieces to anybody. They're allowing you to do it because you are a noble which carries weight with them. Mm-hmm. So it's a ten foot high wall. Four four feet wide, ten feet tall, solid stone. Part of the reason a lot of this stuff is pretty pricey too is because you're 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 asking these people to do heavy construction during winter. Yeah. It means that the logistics are quite difficult, like clearing out foundations is quite difficult. Now everything's a little harder because you're doing it during harsh winter conditions. So this is this is a difficult moment because just think in the mind of the character he wants Rend to be rebuilt, but uh, he doesn't know, especially if there's going to be a war to come, how well um, he's going to be able to make the money back in a year. I mean, I've got the two extra. Say what? We're halfway through the first month of this changeover period. Yeah. So at the end of this, at the end of this period, you'll have nine months to attempt to accrue that much money, which is quite good in game time because we've already passed what three months prior to this. Yeah, you've. I mean, before this, you've already gone. You only go, you, you can measure the amount of time that's passed in weeks. Yeah. So hold on, I'm just trying to work. I'm just got. I've got basic stats around. So I say I've done three months already. That gives me nine months more. See, it's doable. If we get the same luck in terms of money. And if I can get an economy right in that time. 
and you've got to spend money to make money. So this contract is sitting down in front of you right now, and all you need to do is hold your hand to it. Oh, it's one of those. <laughs> Magical contract. So let's let me get my calculator. He, where's my phone? There, it's in my pocket. Well, I, you said calculator and then corrected yourself to say phone. Yeah. So we've got. Uh, let Let's see here. Um, so fifteen thousand left on the town refurbishment. Thirty-eight thousand for the, uh, the wall. Sixty-seven hundred for the guardhouse. That's. Fifth. Fifty-nine thousand seven hundred. Three months of guard pay is fourteen forty. That's so. That's uh, sixty-one thousand one hundred and forty gold pieces. Is what your is what is what you would need to shell out minimum to make all this work over the next three months. And then if you multiply that by one point two nine, that means ooh, times. Why have you Why have you added the plus. guards to that? Because you got to pay them. Oh uh, yeah, I know. I've still got money in the town fund though. Well, actually, you paid him two months. I paid him two months. So you'd only need to pay him one month would be 480. Mm -hmm. So minus equals times. So that means you'd be paying you'd be paying them back the tune of 78,171 gold pieces. At the end so of the So nearly all. nearly eight you'd you'd owe nearly 80k back to the Lords of Ren or Lords of Ren, Lords of Karna. In a year. Now can I make in, that? In, in that amount of time. Um, and it would be entirely up to you if you told anybody else about this. Yeah. Because um, frankly, if you were in, if you were in debt 80,000 gold and neglected to tell anybody about it, that'd be funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to accept the deal. All right, so Art Locks, you put your hand, your, your palm down on the on the contract in front of you and this like a little like Hello. black re black red like flame very quickly like chars the name Artlox Allendil into the signatory line uh, on the contract smiley face <laughs> okay so uh let me check something really quick hey 80,000 <laughs> But see, so an entire town is getting rebuilt with the process of bringing in people and money and protection from Ostia. So I'm thinking that's worth it. Okay, so you have till September 6th of next year. Of next year. It says September 6th, 972 to repay that loan. Okay. Which is seven, which would be seventy eight thousand one hundred and seventy one gold pieces. So, sorry, say that again. The full number: seventy eight thousand one hundred and seventy one. Okay. Should uh, on the day after you default uh, from that loan, all titles, holdings, and lands owned by by you. De would, would default to them. Just quick curiosity, what happens if I die? If you die, then your progeny okay, um, would, 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 would take, the uh, debt. take it. At the moment, your father would incur the debt. <laughs> he could pay it, though. <laughs> okay, cool. That is very interesting indeed. I wasn't sure if you would uh, take that or not. But you have, yes, you have, and immediately, uh, the, the 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 town springs into life. Um, there are hundreds of workmen daily in the town and the surrounding area, simultaneously building a stone guardhouse um, at the mouth of the, or, or, or the, the, the rend side of the bridge that leads towards Ostia. It's a sturdy construction, a big, it's just a big square guard tower, um, several stories high, 
well, with a like a gabled roof and um, arrow slits in it on the upper levels and a side building attached to it for um, basically guard comfort. Um, you know, uh, a hearth and a table and stuff like that. Whoever's guarding the bridge uh, would be able to live in there. Yeah, so they can run and um, make themselves a cup of tea and you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, unbeknownst to you until later on, um, Gigushka himself undertakes a refurbishment of the pier that um, rests on the small fishing village on the north side of the island where he uh, moors his ship. It doesn't. It's not that difficult. Um, the the concrete uh, like pilings driven into the to the like the bedrock already uh, has withstood the time. So it's just like replanking it, making it secure. And you see his uh, if you ever mount the uh, like the the cliffs around Rand, you can see the uh, the, the masts of his. Uh, of his ship uh, tied to the the pier there. It's a very from from your point of view, it's a very strange looking vessel. You've seen um, sailing vessels that were uh, uh, built tall with very wide square sails and like large forecastle. This ship is more low and sleek looking, uh, where instead of a large uh, like a series of large square sails on the main mast you see very large triangular one that seems to uh, rest haphazardly on a like a, a boom like a boom arm it's a very strange looking ship it's got the, uh, got a, a very pro, uh, like a, its bow protrudes out um forwards instead of sweeping back elegantly from your definitely from your point of view a ship uh, uh constru construction methods you've never seen before uh, the the wall the defensive wall uh, that covers the mouth to the valley. That takes most of the, like the entirety of this time, uh, this time period to construct. Yeah. The snow starts falling. Um, digging the foundations is very difficult on uh, on frozen ter terrain. But uh, the, the the craftsmanship is a is excellent. They it includes a stone gatehouse with two large square towers that protrude out the front, and a um, uh, a portcullis that could be lifted up and down to close access to the road, and they also have dug a um, a ditch in front of the wall uh, that angles down, and then it angles down about ten feet, and then it's about two feet flat, then angles back up ten feet. So there's this huge, long uh, uh, ditch in front of the wall. So while the wall itself is only ten feet tall, top to bottom on the front is about twenty feet. Thank God for that. I was like, that was something I was going to get my own workforce to do if that didn't actually happen. I was thinking, right, how can I make this wall higher? Dig down. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, uh, it's not filled in or anything. It's no. just a pit, but yeah, it's very, but it's there. It's very Celtic hill fort. Um, there you go. Um, and I'm okay with that. That's like, um, okay. So I want to investigate this fishing village as well as part of my time. Um, as the next okay. thing, I think. That, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the fishing village is more a small assemblage of ruined foundations. Uh, having been exposed to the like the salt air and and the uh, well, the actual town of Rend is nestled in this valley. This this fishing village is just right out on the on the coastline. All of the the wood has succumbed to um, to the like the sea salt and and wet rot all the, the structures are completely decomposed and decayed and there's a small assemblage of stone uh, foundations left and the remnants of what used to be small roads and paths but little else okay um now i remember you oh i forgot there is also the the ruined brig mm -hmm. that is washed up on the beach there is that where you're going yeah, I was um, I was just going to inquire if there's anything on it, um, it, just in case there's anything on it, and then um, how damaged it is. Uh, uh, I spent a lot of time with vessels um, in when I was growing up, so it'll be something I'd be able to do. You, uh, it's laying on its side um, on uh, on the beach with its um, with its stern just kind of like partially in the water, like it ran aground really hard during like a high tide. And uh, beached itself, then the water, then the, the the tide went out, leaving it uh, lopsided and, and stranded uh, on the beach. There's a large, uh, probably let's say four feet by ten feet section of um, 
uh, of exterior planking ripped out of the, the bottom below the waterline, exposing the, the ribs of the ship. Uh, on the inside, it seems there, there is a, um, a chest that has been broken into and looted. Uh, and whatever its ca cargo was has been rotted away and destroyed by the by the elements. I thought as much. Um, okay. That's well, good to know that there's a boat there that we could rebuild. I don't want to look in... It's, oh. it's, it's keel is intact. Okay. Its masts are intact. It's all of its tackle and its um, sails are destroyed. But so the need... physical structure of the ship is intact. You need to repair the hull a bit and get sails and then a crew as well. The oh. And the longer it sits, the more it decays. Okay, so... How much would that be to... Do I think to repair? If I could get the right... To, to have the ship repaired re and, and refloated yeah. so that it's not sitting on the ground being damaged. Yeah. A couple thousand gold, probably. And a crew. And a crew of sailors, that is going to be something that's going to be extremely difficult to find. Yeah. As the uh, the sailing boats in this area are more like small fishing boats. Hmm. Um, there aren't... there. Are, there you, have not, you have not seen outside of Gigushka's ship um, a ship with well, you know, proper rigging boat. and tackle. I could at least so that might be repair the boat and harbor it in the town. How much do I reckon? Okay, so you're going to have to basically hire workmen uh, to uh, repair repair the ship, uh, get it like onto some sort of uh, rails, you know, you know, haul it up in, into yeah. an upright position, and then like relaunch it. I'm going to say that's going to take half the uh, at least half the time, so six weeks. Yep. Um, and the the labor on that is going to cost thirty four hundred gold. To get it repaired so it can float and refloated and on the opposite side of the pier of Yagusha's ship. Okay, That's that. not going to include ah, just uh, uh, sails, <laughs> tackle, rigging, or crew. That's just to repair it and get it floating. Okay, so I'm going to hold off on... <sighs> okay, you can gonna... always take out... You can always extend your line of credit. Extend my line of credit. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm going to try not extend that any more than I need to. Um, how many silver is it to a gold again? Ten. Okay, so there's there's two seventy there. Oh yeah, did we uh, also get that copper changed up? Yeah, um, you could have easily done that. Yeah. Uh, that well, twelve thousand copper is what one hundred and twenty gold. Yeah. Interestingly enough, the uh, the bank is owned by that gnome you guys saw, that Elric did business oh, with. Oh, is it? His, his it is. name is Wil Wilcom Dinkit. Wilcom Dinkit. Yeah. He always wears like a flashy purple vest. Very plucky. Very upbeat. Brilliant. My friend um, in the game. He's on, he's one of the seven too. Yeah. He was the he was the gnome on the seven. Yeah. making notes um I just, I just really love the uh you 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 seem like a like a like a well-to-do businessman who has uh run out of money for his his like like keystone construction project like okay i'm only eighty thousand dollars in debt if i count the change in my pocket i might be able to make it to next payday yeah see i'm just marking down how much uh i need to pay people as well that's the thing um how much was it for the guards it was 420 wasn't it guard no four guards are four, 480 480 Four it's eight. 480 per month for the guards. If you wanted to hire on a staff for the, the manor house, it's 200 a month. That's for several servants, cooks, you know, gardeners, things like that. Not that you need that much in uh, winter, but you know. Yeah, I, do, I don't need them at the moment. 480. So if I minus that from my accounts now, that'd be the best thing to do. Um, that would cover the third month, yes. Yeah, just to make sure I'm Playing, I'm not playing with fire and running into more debt. Um, 
Get the union on your ass. We haven't really gotten paid in six weeks. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I can't imagine. Um... Three, two, two, oh. Actually, quickly plus that. So I'll remove that from my bag. Um, to zero gold in my own fund. I'm putting it all into the town fund. Uh, and then minus 480. Okay. Got oh, two. Oh. Did you want to do anything with the magical items you found in the pool? Um... Gushka's gone on his sailing boat, hasn't he? He's, he's off. He stays. Oh, he stays. Oh, I'm going to ask... He send, he, his, his boat goes, he stays. I'm going to show him them and... Um... All right, he's willing... Trying to, uh, he, trying to convince him to, um, to... What's it called? Identify? Yeah, identify them for me. Uh, Gia Gushka is, is willing to identify items for you. Each item will, will take a day and cost 100 gold. He'll do the first one for free. Out of the goodness of his heart. And the fact that I'm not taxing him. Um, He'll do one for free. Each item will take a day. Get to do the javelin for free. and yeah, no, I'll, I'll keep the study. For a, You'll keep the leather? Are you going to wear it? No, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna not tell him about the leather. I'm just gonna tell him about okay. the traveling for now. So, uh, this leather, um, it is, it is javelin, a plus. You oh, you want to do the? Do you want to do the javelin? Yeah, You're not doing it. Okay, so the, the javelin, uh, the javelin is called a spear of lightning. When you throw it, it magically transforms into a bolt of lightning five feet wide and sixty feet long. Any creatures that uh, are in that that line uh, from where it is thrown. Make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw. Uh, if they fail, they take 2d8 lightning damage. Does the it... target that gets hit by the uh, by the, the lightning bolt takes 2d8 lightning damage plus the spear's damage. Plus the javelin's damage. And does the javelin just stay in them? Or does it return to you? <laughs> when it, 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 it doesn't return to you. It returns back to its javelin form when it Okay. Yes. I was just wondering if it's Sorry. like Zeus's thunderbolt and just comes back. No. So you, when you throw it, it basically turns into Zeus's lightning bolt, but then you have to run over and get it. Okay. Good to know. Right. Okay. Um. It doesn't require two men. Anybody can use it. Oh, that's interesting. Keeping that one. Then. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Right. Back onto the. You. Uh. You, you do happen to notice all of the items that you uh, traded to him at this point are on display. Oh, like, can I just quickly peruse their prices? Oh, sure you can. Mm. All right, let me uh, pull up my other file here. <laughs> I mean, I'm not bitter at all. I needed that letter to go, so. You just, you're just curious at this point? Yeah. Uh, so, let's see, desktop, D&D &D stuff. Because they were just all items that were just sat in the bag that none of us were using and none of us could afford to, like, identify. I don't need an Eyes of Charming anymore. I am just that damn charming. Um. Uh, okay, so you see the small iridescent pearl ring is labeled as a ring of spell storing and is uh, priced at uh, 650 gold pieces. Oh, Cosman's going to hate me for giving that one away. You can. It can be used to store a third level spell. You basically cast a spell into the ring, and then it stays in there forever. And as an action, you can cast the spell out of the ring. Yeah, he's really gonna miss that. Let's just not the... show this video to Roach. Yeah. Uh, you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, no... I'm recording it, and I'm gonna upload it though at the same time. Um, um, it's what I'm the... thinking. Yeah. Uh... The circlet is uh, labeled as a um, a crown of intellect. Whoever wears it gets plus two to their intellect, and it's li uh, listed at 4,000 gold pieces. Um, what other items were there? The Eyes of Charming. I know what they do. You know what the Eyes of Charming on are? And what else was it? And the, um, the goo. Oh, yeah, hang on one second. I got to look that, uh, that one up. I have it somewhere else. I think I'm, I'm a little bit bitter about the crown, actually. 
Because... Yeah, that was what Slavobor was wearing that. Yeah, he was. But um, I don't actually know if any of the party use intelligence as a ability that we have at the moment, so I'm not that. Um, the Eyes of Charming are, are listed at 56,000 gold. Your sh what? Yeah. It's a, wonder it's a wondrous item. I didn't know that. Oh, fuck. Well. Uh, and the last one was, uh, let me see if I remember what it was called. It's either one of the solvent. It's either the solvent or it's the glue. I gotta look it up in the DM's <laughs> guide in, here. In the in the, in the that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I don't remember exactly what it was called, but I have a two general things idea. It could have been. It's it's it was a long time ago. It was indeed. Um. So give me a moment here to try to find it. Because that one, I very, very vividly remember putting there for a reason. Is it the Sovereign Glow? Ever... It's not. Okay, so it's the other one. It could be. I'm trying to find where I put that one. Because I scoured the um, oh, there it is. manual to try and find out what it was. What was it? Already here. It is... Um... Uh, Kaogatum's ointment is what it is, and it's priced at 4,000 gold po uh, pieces. Sorry, repeat that? It's what? It's a jar of, uh, god, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, Kaogatum's ointment. Oh, okay. Fair enough. It's, it's like a gray paste, uh, you could, uh, it could be placed in poison wounds or swallowed. It detoxifies any poison, so you can use it to get rid of any poisons in your body as an action. Um, and it, it, you could use it as a curative and get 1d8 plus 5 points of damage cured. Ah, fair enough. So it's basically like a cure-all kind of thing. You can, rub, you can rub it on burns or, you know, like in a poison wound or something and you can get rid of the poison. Fair enough. God, I gave that, I gave, that was the, I think... The if first I... item I ever gave you guys. Well, which one? And it's the uh, the ointment. It fell out the bag. Oh, was it already in the bag? I thought you guys had picked it up. No, it fell out the bag. So it was near the it was near it was near the front. But I gave you that like what nine months ago or something like that. And we, just now, someone figured out what it was. Oh well, yeah, the, the, it's I used it for trading purposes. The only thing I'm annoyed about there then is the eyes of charming, but they were never getting used ever. I tried them once and. So yeah, the items were listed at 56,000, 4,000, 4,000, and 650. And that was a 1,000 gold, gold deal. Fuck. That was a 1,000 gold deal. Ah, that's all right. That take that takes the cake for the the, the most gold lost in one in, uh one social encounter. No, it doesn't. Does the, it doesn't quite do do does it? No, I think, well, I, think again, I'm on I, I still think. It, the elves are making no, 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 no. You're right. El so that's that. So you're so it, I was thinking of Coswin. So now it's Elric stealing gold bullion <laughs> and trading it for about a thousand gold pieces worth of stuff. It's always about a thousand gold. We have very uh, crap understanding of how much a thousand gold is. Well, like, like uh, he he wanted items with one basic enchantment on them which is not it's just like base price of the item plus a little bit of gold getting one enchantment on an item is pretty cheap yeah getting two enchantments on an item is like 10 times as much and then getting more is like it gets exponential yeah because they become in incompatible and stuff it's like it's like trying to put yeah. more and more mods on RimWorld. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. The you know the first couple are easy, but then once you get twenty or thirty on there, it starts interfering and stuff and mm. you know stuff like that. But El Elric stealing gold bullion and selling it for like five percent of what it was worth. Uh, Artlock's trading like 
seventy thousand gold worth. Well, not seventy thousand, but sixty sixty five thousand gold worth of stuff for our uh, transit. Uh, right cost of one thousand. Only my entire debt. Uh, and uh, a- after that is Coswin talking himself out of nine thousand gold. Um, yeah. In a transaction. It's okay though because. I think there's going to be more and more um, occasions where we can just start shifting magical items onto this guy for money. And Well, there's also the issue that you promise a lot of these magical items to other people. No, only that one person that I never agreed to. Um... Okay. Well, I, d- I did agree to that, but he doesn't know that they've come from here. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. All right, anything else? Um, as in to do today, it, or is... Um... Yeah, is, was there anything else on your list of things to do? So you got, like, all this construction taken care of. You got your, you know, you know, you know, you did your things with Gigushka, um, with the guards, Elric. Yeah. Um, I'd like to try and find the snail again. I'd put the bell around Ah, it. yeah, flail snail. So uh, you make your way back down to the Undercroft, and I'd like you to do a nature check. Do a what? Sorry, you cut out. Nature check. Nature. You're trying to find an animal. Fair enough. Can I take some time on it? Uh, well, well, what I'm, what the, the way I'm going to be working this is the 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 lower you roll, the longer it's going to it's going to okay, take fair. you to find him. Basically, um, you you take days on this task. Uh, you go down there every day. And you try to find the flail snail. And you thought originally it was going to be pretty easy. You're like, I'll just follow the trail of, of, of glass. And that'll lead me to him. The problem was is the snail like crossed over its own path a lot. And so you'd get to these points where you'd be like, okay, which the way the fuck was he going? You follow the wrong path. You learned yourself in circles. Every once in a while you get to a point where like it gets to a wall, then goes vertical. And you're just like... <laughs> spider walking and, Fuck. It, uh, <laughs> yeah and then uh, eventually what, what you, you, you notice is all of the glass left behind in the undercroft is unusable um, it's all been it, it was left on it was it was left behind as a like a, a viscous liquid which settled over the bones and solidified so when you take it up it's just this it's got it, it's wibbly wobbly and it's got you know like skull imprints and you know you know like the ends of femurs sticking into it. It wouldn't work good as a construction material. Okay. Eventually, what you do notice is that the the snail took a downward vertical uh, task down towards where you left all the rocks vertically down. So it, you 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 follow its trail to that other second that that hole, and then it just goes down the edge. A fucking snail. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be the death of me. Right. Did, now, did you want to follow him? <laughs> yeah, fuck it. I'll cast fly All right. and go down there. So you cast fly on your loot. Go back down the hole. Well, I'm only going to uh, go down have... for the ten mi- like the, the, the time I can fly, which is about... Ten minutes? Yeah. All right, so you you get down. You, you, it just takes you a minute to get down there, and you you can see the trail of glass go on the ceiling, like off into the distance. Okay, how far in the distance? As far as you can see. Uh. So you can stay down here and track him, or you can go back up. Yeah, I'll stay down here. All right, so you you generally carry rations and camping equipment, stuff like that with you, so you don't feel too bad about being down here. You're confident in your own abilities. You spent two days down here following the trail. This solid, gleaming glass. Every once in a while it comes down, goes around, down on the ground for a while, off back. And... uh, I'm going to ask you to make two perception checks. Alright, so on the first night you're there, and your camp, uh, you basically set up a little camp. You don't really have a campfire. You're sitting on uh, flagstones, basically. Uh, And it's it's just this endless corridor 
like 80 feet wide towering square uh, columns elegantly carved with uh, like inlays just one after another after another after another you just kind of nestle in between two of them not only really nestle in because there's quite a distance between them leaning up against one and uh, you think you hear what sounds like several footsteps approaching like marching okay you say I'm sat down huddled against the thing right yes yes I am gonna try and cover myself with the the cloak that I took from Elric stealth check Okay. So you you hear these footsteps and you quickly grab the co the the cloak out of the bag of holding, throw it over yourself, and try to get, you know cover it, you know as much of your belongings with it as as you can. Kind of pull everything in uh, close to you, like hands over your knees, kind of thing. And you just sit there for a minute as you hear you, it's, it's, it's 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 the it's this rhythmic rhythmic thumping. Sounds like like leather soles on on polished stone and it's gonna it gets louder and you start to hear these guttural voices speaking a language you've never heard before and so it's a language i don't understand no it's a language you don't understand so it's not it's not common elven or infernal okay no it is not as it gets closer and louder you can hear at least three distinct voices talking loudly and you could hear their footsteps moving closer and closer and you you you, you, you as they they get closer and you can feel their presence as they get close to the column you're standing behind you look over what you see are several stock well-built forms gray-skinned white hair long gray white beards all holding massive weapons like great hammers great swords like a great a great axe all none of none of them readied but held over their back and they take no notice of you as they walk uh as they walk past um but you're you're fairly certain that you witnessed for the first time in your life a uh like a durgar like scouting party Drogar as in uh dark elf uh that would be drow that would be oh. this would be uh, these would be dark. These would be like under dark dwarves. Yeah, under under dwarves. Under uh, under dwarves. That works under too. Dwarves. The, the sound of their voices and the footsteps fade off into the in the distance, and you pass the rest of the night wary, but unharmed. This is fucking. I was right in calling this the mines of bloody Moria. Then <laughs> you, the the next day, you do find your friendly flail snail. You track the the glass right up to him. Uh, he is just slowly <laughs> moving moving down the corridors, leaving this down here. The glass, the 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 like the snail juice he leaves behind is just on these perfectly formed uh, and carved flagstones, so it settles into these perfectly clear uh, sheets of glass. Okay, and uh, you uh, you you find him. What would you like to do with him? See, now I'm worried to put the bell on him now. <laughs> because like, if the Drogo find him... I'm well, he's been... He, he, they're, they're down here. He's down here. Okay. I, both, parties, both parties are unharmed. Yeah, but he can climb walls and stuff. True. <laughs> it doesn't mean they necessarily... Well, yeah, I suppose they would know where he is because they're, the, they're probably better trackers than I am. Okay, I'll, I'll put the bell on it. All right, uh, g give me an animal, animal handling check. Okay. Um, he's quite large. Uh, his eye stalks tower at least easily 10 feet off the ground, so you kind of have to uh, wait for an opportune moment for him ducking down to, to eat something off the ground. But you manage to, like, really quickly, like, loop the bell around around his head, and then take a couple steps back, real quickly. Mm -hmm. You just kind of like slow, like you could see like the the eye stalks like slowly look at you, and then like go back to what he was doing and move on. And every once in a while, when he, uh, like he hits an uneven patch uh, between, 
uh, stones or or moves up a wall. You just hear a little clackling, clackling <laughs> as the bell just slowly shifts. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I'm gonna get some of uh, the. I'm gonna see if I can take some of the glass now. The on the that's on the flagstones. That's a bit. How would you like to try to collect it? Because it's basically one solid long sheet. So I'm thinking. The flagstones are like two feet by two feet. They're these really big, huge stones. Yeah, is what I'm thinking. And then between is, them, between them, there's little, you know, there's little tiny grooves where the stones meet. I'm gonna like score it with either my rapier or like, uh, or um. Do you, do you have any slashing weapons? I, I, Elric had two swords, didn't he? Uh, no, he had the one you buried it with, and he gave the other one to Edmund. Oh, that's right. Um, okay. Uh, I will... I've got crossbow bolts. That, I mean, you could grab that by the, like, the shaft right under... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna score it with, um, crossbow bolts. Okay, um, and then, and then just give it a quick whack and try to break it along the yeah. line. Yeah, yeah, I like cutting... Like when you like fold paper to try and rip it, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, give me a dexterity check. Aha. Uh -huh. well, that's something I can do a bit better. He says. Actually, no, I can't do it. But, uh, dexterity save is good. Sorry, for me to check. No, I'm the best marble done here. Ooh. Um. Right. Six. I'm. I'm going to say that. After several several times, you try this a couple times. You only manage to get one pane unbroken in in a nice square section. That's right. I can come. But get you more. you try it time and time again, and it's just every single time you try to uh, uh, plink it on the score marks, you get like these big shatter marks through it. Um, I'm still gonna take some of the the, the shat all the shattered like the larger shattered pieces as well. Throw them in the bag. Yeah, it's all in the bag, sort of thing. Um, because mm -hmm. we might be able to cut it up into smaller things and use it for small. It's it's just good to have. Um, yeah. And then, if nice... you want, you could you could send like trained, dedicated people down here to try to collect this stuff. Yeah, but there is also dark under dwarves down here, so I don't want. To... There are Durgar. Yeah, I don't want to risk. Anyone that's not from the party just yet? Um, I'll risk Coswood's life any day of the week, but not my paid guardsmen. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to... Unless someone comes along from town that looks like they can handle themselves and looks like they can make the trip down and then down again safely and, like, stay there. It's a, it's a, it's a journey to get all the way down there and back. Yeah. So I'm going to, like... If I've got a couple of three days from, like my business come down like business up top come down here and do it i think okay um how about you give me um give me three dex more dex checks one two three okay, hold on. okay uh so i'm gonna say with your with your free days but when when you're not administering to uh the town or the construction or dealing with coswin or dealing with aquilus um that you you take your time to go back down there and uh you get a little bit better at it um i mean there's there's just innumerable opportunities to to practice on this and it takes you some going but you manage to get to a point where you can pretty regularly break this these uh like two feet like roughly two feet by two feet it's a little like squashed down one way if, because of the width of the flail snail um yeah, two feet by two feet you could you could roughly break those out pretty regularly and you get yourself a couple dozen pains okay um let's say three dozen Three dozen panes. Three dozen roughly uh, two foot by two foot like panes of thick glass. Three times twelve of two by two snail glass. Mm hmm You know, have you ever seen uh, the, I mean, I'm sure you have living in England, the glass on like a like 150, 200 year old house. It kind of like when you look through it, it gives a distortion. It's a little wavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. Yeah, okay. That's fine. 
Okay. Um, that's quite nice, actually. I quite like that effect. Um, no, I mean, if you if you want, you could install that in the Windows. You could start installing that stuff in the Windows in town, or you could try to sell it for profit. I think at this point, because the houses are already getting rebuilt, uh, it's provide the building material for free. Huh? You're per, are you going to provide it to the to the to the, the builders? Yeah. Okay. Very, that, that, that's very nice. Most uh, most of it would be cut up into smaller panes and used in like you know those like like eight by ten inch window panes yeah. with the, the cross hat with the cross beams in them, and fit it into windows in the town. Yeah, that'd be nice. He gives us... That's enough to cover a good section of the town. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can always go back and do it if we have more downtime in game. Yeah, exactly. Got... And then There's I mean later on, on if you ever fit. If you ever figure out the logistics, you could send parties down there to do it yeah. for you. Uh, the, the only thing I'd have to do to get like parties down there, I think, would the best way of doing it would be getting the snail back up to the first level, covering over the hole with a door, and then like clearing lots of the bone. So they you have to have get to... them some put 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 them in a snail a snail cage with uh, flat sides. Yeah, <laughs> make a large box there that we can. You know, but the the thing is, the flail flail snails eat eat rock and metal and they any, eat everything. Anything that goes in front of them, they're like the world's greatest animal in D and D. I think they're almost as good as the um, what are they called? Oh, um, the floating things that are really nice. Flump. Yeah, flump. Almost good as them it, in my eyes, anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But, well, it's a good thing you rolled decent on the animal handling check, because if you if you failed, if like if you rolled like a, like a really low on that, that thing would have attacked you. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And it probably it I don't remember. I think it's a C or like three or four. It would have it would have given you a run for your money. Oh yeah, it, it would have. It probably would have as well, because I'm like the non combatant con combatant party member. Yeah. It would have been me trying to escape it, which I think is probably doable because it's a. Well, it's got a movement speed of like ten feet. Yeah. Exactly. Um. It would be like, oh shit, take a hit. Mark. It probably would have gotten one attack on you, and then you would have been out of its yeah, range. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, but yeah, so that's, there's that. So that's going to be providing some of the building material. Um, any news on that um, com that bulk goods trader that was moving into town? Have they set up yet? They requisitioned their building. Yeah. Uh, how... They, they they themselves outfitted it to make it uh, like weatherproof, mm -hmm. so that their their goods weren't um, weren't damaged. And they set up um, shop in the town. They took they took the large one of those large L shaped buildings, yeah, and then the a, an adjacent side. building. To, yeah, and then an adjacent building to use as an office. And uh, over the course of three, you know. We're basically talking about this a little amorphously. Over the course of the three months, you can see large. Um, you're, you're used to seeing small carts, like those hand carts that you can pull by yourself or like a one horse thing. What you start seeing is are like, like four to six horse carts coming in, um, coming in and out filled with bulk quantities of goods. Um, like, you know, you know, you know, lumber enough to build several houses in one load and stuff like that. Okay. You see lots and lots and like, uh, you, you cart after cart after cart after cart every single day, endless cart loads of stone coming in from the far side of Karna somewhere that, that are being used for construction of your wall and your guardhouse just endlessly every single day day and night coming in coming in uh, full and leaving empty and then returning later and the construction goes slow at first because the initial the initial phases are quite difficult leveling out foundations on frozen ground and such but once that once that's on the actual building of the wall you could see it every day from the windows of your your manor house getting taller and taller and it just stops there and gets squat hmm. from your side it doesn't look that tall no it's the far side it's the defensibility of it that matters so yeah and the guard the guard house though is like three stories that's nice um i can see that all from my my manor um so like just looking at my list, um, how much time have I got left to play with? Oh, was it, what did you specifically want to do? Just if I would have time to maybe go to, say, like, Kana again, just do the whole talking to people, performing. Oh, yeah. that's like a day trip. Also go to maybe Warstead for one couple of days to... 
just meet and greet. Meet and greet. Talk about the town. Talk about the... yeah. That's easy. That's a few. That's a few days worth of stuff. That's that's yeah. that's easy. Do that. Um, have the men from Karna appeared yet? Which men? The men that Karna promised. The soldiers. Oh, the actual yeah, they're uh, soldiers. They they don't appear uh, until like the two month mark. Okay. Once things have really started going. And they send not very many, but they look they look hard they, they look like hardened uh, or they you know you know vets. They come with uh, uniformed armor, huge like rectangular shields that look like they're uh, they're more suited for being you know uh, you know not for holding but more for just leaning on the ground in front of you and very heavy crossbows. Oh, very nice. okay. Like not not your little like light crossbow that you deal with one hand, like the kind that you need like like a crank. As in, and... uh, you played Medieval Total War Two. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like those Think crossbow like men in there that have the big shields on their back. Those. Yeah, those guys. I really liked that unit when you were playing as the Italian states. You could always get them quite. Yeah, readily. like that. Yeah. Then oh, that's cool. They spent they spend most of their time uh, like at the bridge, they're like at the guardhouse. Yeah, fair enough. Make basically basically making their presence known more than actually doing much. That's that's all they're there for, really. Though, so I'm not too my my guards handle the day to day guarding of the yeah. town. They're there as a security force. They, oh my, they contract security like in Af- <laughs> like, you see them in Afghanistan, yeah. like in the military camps. All the yeah. normal military guys, and then these guys in the black suit, like in the uh, like black body yeah. armor with their jeeps, and like, <laughs> hey, we're contractors. Uh, Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to do these um, extra performance and persuasion checks. Do you want me to roll for those? Yes. Uh, how many? Do 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 one for do do two of each. Do uh, a performance persuasion, a performance, then a persuasion. That's going to be Karna, then Worsted. Okay, so um, the the perform the, the second performance in Karna um, garners uh, not as much uh, uh, attention as it did before. You're starting to get uh, the these these l- l- like laughs from the crowd, and every once in a while, when you're walking past people, you hear whispers of like um, uh, uh, l- l- the singing count. <laughs> Hi. Like kind kind of in like a like like a uh, not not like a like a gentle ribbing kind of way. Yeah. Okay. Um. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say you get half you you get half the money you, you would have gotten, um, kind of a diminishing returns in Karna, uh, ninety gold. Okay. Um. And you do your normal persuasion thing of trying to uh, spread the word of rent, you know, housing, uh, no taxes, things like that, freedom. Uh, you do the same thing in. And Worstead, you get 200 gold for pouring there. Those people aren't used to you. They've never seen you before. Yeah. Small, smaller town, though. Uh, not as many people to talk to. Definitely poorer. Okay. And um, I'm, over the course of the, the three months, um, lots of people do come to, to live and work in the town. That little pimple-faced shit kid that cost when I had a, uh, an interaction with, uh, who's a launderer. Uh, he comes and he sets up a. Uh, he he takes a house. He sets up a like a like a, his own launderer in town. Um, people start trickling in in ones and twos every once in a while. An entire family down on their luck um, comes to comes to rent, settle. Uh, that you you meet them all. You take their names. You inform them of. Uh, the rules and regulations of living in Rand, what's expected of them, um, how they're supposed to behave, and things like that. And everybody seems pretty, uh, pretty okay with. Don't be a shithead, and you get a free house. It's a pretty good deal for most of the people. It's a it's a free house, and then when you start working, you will start paying like back to rent, mm-hmm. obviously, in terms of keeping it running. Uh, and over the course of three months. The town fills out. the 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 roofs go back on. The stonework 
uh, gets fixed and patched up. And the town becomes a, a bustling little, a poor, but bustling uh, uh, area. There is um, the, uh, the, oh, uh, one thing I forgot is the tavern mm. uh, is taken over, well, if, if it's okay with you. And there is a, like, a plump woman in her 50s. Oh, fantastic. Um, who, who goes by who goes by the name Nana Hobbs and her uh young like 12 14 year old granddaughter um would like uh, they would like to take over ch- uh charge of the of the tavern yeah, basically be the tavern right. keep cool Nana Hobbs is more yep. than welcome um uh there is and uh the you, you know this is this is kind of like a medieval you know you know high fantasy setting so that while m- many um Establishments wouldn't necessarily have names on the signs; they would just have pictures mm-hmm. and, and things like that. This one, the, the, the sign she hangs outside of the uh, of the tavern is it's a picture of a guy pulling on a leash and a pig pulling back the other way. <laughs> Name, Fantastic. And 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 it goes it goes by the name the reluctant pig. Oh, that's I like that the reluctant pig. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that that yeah no I'm I'm happy with that Nana hopes. <laughs> I almost forgot that. Over my heart. Um. I just I forgot I forgot about that one, oh. but yeah, the town is 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 basically full by the end of the three month period. Okay. There there are a few, you know, smaller houses and hovels that are that remain while are while finished um, are basically boarded off because no one's living in them and you don't want squatters. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a small number of those left and the temple in the town. Which is reminiscent of all the other temples in the area you've seen, yeah. uh, dominated by a large circular turret and then a back building. Um, other than the has Temple been, of Helm, obviously, because that was slightly. Has been, yeah, this one has been um, left un, unoccupied as um, the Temple of Helm has uh, garnered a lot of support. Tyburn has spent most of his time in Karna in this in the surrounding area, uh, you know, passing out alms. Um, the, the trade route, which used to uh, cut across the Field of Bones uh, and, and avoid the temple. Most traders now take the actual road south past the temples. Many people stop by the temple to receive a, a blessing of uh, protection. Um, a number of adherents have uh, uh, come to regularly you know, worship at, uh, at the, the Temple of Helm. And there's been a... A kind of unofficial greeting all of the uh, the travelers uh, express to each other upon you know like uh, passing uh, in the temple and in around the surrounding area. They always uh, greet each other with the phrase "Helm helps those who help themselves." <laughs> oh, fantastic! No, I was going to say the temple in town should remain as an like a blank canvas, open worship. It is. Yeah, it's it, you. You can leave. You can leave it open. Um, it might uh, attract squatters. Um, I mean, or I'm or pre- you could, like all the all the unoccupied buildings have been finished and boarded off until someone like, like to, officially settles it. I would like to leave it open just in case people who don't worship Helm want to worship. Um, That's fine. I mean, as long as the squatters don't start building in there and building camps, <laughs> I, I, you know, you know, as long as they don't park their RVs out front. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like it's one of those things. It's like obviously, being a temple, it would be open for poor people to mm-hmm. stay, like have a roof over their heads. So I'm okay with that. But you're trying to try to treat it like a pantheon right now. Yeah. It's it's it's. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna mute my mic while there's the ice cream van outside. Jesus Christ, that was creepy. Are you sure there isn't like a clown with a butcher knife outside your door right now? Um, I mean, the man who runs the ice cream van is like a bald oh, headed skinhead. Like, oh, jeez. Like, he's, he's like, if you've ever seen like um, East End gangster movies, he looks like he should be in that, but he runs an gotcha. ice cream van. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, his name looks like it should be like. Um, Dave, who's really well known for killing people with a butcher's knife, <laughs> like, um, but he's an ice cream purveyor slash disposal expert. <laughs> yeah, he, he runs cleanup. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that sort of guy. Um, All right, really, so really are we? Cream, but, um, <laughs> you really want to? You sure you don't want to go chase down Dave? Uh, no, I'm alright. <laughs> um, uh, so I think we've covered most everything. Yeah, I'm just trying to. 
I'm guessing all the uh, Aquilus has finished his work. Um, all the tabards have been yes, handed by, out. By the by the end of the three month period, all the tabards will have been handed out. Um, Matilda would have provided two for every guard, uh, two high quality ones for you, and has uh, ten extras um, in the temple of Helm, just kind of like set away in storage. Okay. Aquilus provides the I think it was thirteen long or short swords and the thirty. Um, it was 15, like wasn't auxiliary. it? 15? 15? Because it was 15? 11 and the four bowmen. What do you need? Okay. Oh, text messages from you. Uh oh, Ben's in trouble with the wife. <laughs> no, I, she wanted us to look at Instagram, and I was like, what the fuck? Who is messaging me? And it was her. <laughs> Where's Instagram? Did I delete it? I forgot you had Instagram. It's oh, just, I moved it. It's just all dog photos. It's just dog photos? Yeah, your Instagram well, is just Penny everywhere. It's a lot of Penny. It's Penny and you in pajamas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, so is that it for the day? Um, I think so. I just... Um... I, I mean, you can give this to me in the next section, session, but I'd like to see what the damage is in terms of money going out, money coming in with our Arcus and stuff. Um, um, I think we'll probably leave that for the next session. Yeah, and... Um, uh, I'm just double-checking my lists. Uh... Um, yeah, that's the only other thing is um, I didn't do part six, um, yeah, which we but we can talk with the rest of the crew about that because I'm sure Tybin would get involved with the freedom section in terms of freedom trying to sort out something for those poor enslaved people below um and also um i would like to with arcus in and um if i've got free like it's free time i was also actually as there's the laundromat kid in the thing i would like to get any of the um anything that needs like that's linen or like curtains and things from the the house washed mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and i would i would just like to clean out the, the house and make it look a little bit presentable so i can have any Guests. diplomatic accords with people yeah that sort of thing gotcha cool i can take care of that but yeah um other than that, I, think, I think i think we're good i think we're good so um just say as always thank you for watching guys um we will be back blah, blah. yeah you're watching this we're going to... After. After the fact that we've done this. Oh, it's going to be... So yeah, so hello from the past. Hello from the past. And um, it's probably what I'll do is I'm going to upload it, like, now, um, but private it and, and then, give yeah. the link to Tabletop Chat. Yeah. In case they want to see what happened. Yeah. Okay. Two hours and 24 minutes. Done. I thought it'd take about two hours, so that's right yeah. about, about on, on track. Yeah. Okay. And...